Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, glory, and honor unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls God and Jesus Christ. I want to give double honors to my elder apostles of Great Millstone that taught me this knowledge and all the other elders in other camps. My name is Yahudan, and I'm a, a brother, a part of the GMS Colorado camp. Today, uh, I just wanted to do a, uh, my sit down on confusions of face because, well, it's always been a problem, but, you know, I felt like myself, I would be better one to, to, to prove uh, the scriptures correct in this matter because I am a confusion of face and I appear to be a so-called Caucasian, but I am not. I am actually of the tribe of Judah, I believe. My father is a, a so-called Negro, and so was my grandfather. So I just wanted to put that, uh, um, the scoffers to bed on this one because it, it doesn't make any sense, and they have no validity. And if you read the scriptures, you'll know that. So let me go ahead and grab my first scripture here, and we're going to dig into what happened to Israel after they were spread um, amongst the nations. It says, this is Daniel chapter 9, verse 5. We have sinned and have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. So Israel, get down, go get down, go lay down. Israel was uh, broken up and, and, and scattered among the nations due to their inability to follow the scriptures and the commandments of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And for that, um, you had mixing in other nations, you know, it's not unlawful for an Israelite man to lay with a, a woman of another nation The scriptures do say that you should sow your seed with a good stock being of your own nation But that's not what went down and through that that was the beginning of the culmination of uh, of Israelite men having children with other other nations women and them coming out looking more and more and more like that nation that they were in and it says, continuing, Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants, thy prophets, which spake in thy name to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, and to all the people of the land. So back in ancient times, when Israel was still intact, um, the Most High sent prophets to deal with Israel. Initially, it was Moses and, and Aaron. They... Uh, got the laws and the commandments from the Most High and Mount Sinai, um, and, and therefore that became a, a, a covenant between the 12 patriarchs of Israel, uh, the sons of Jacob, um, and their children after them. It was a, a covenant that had to be uh, fulfilled, and we did not do that. So as a result of that, what went down is we were spread amongst the nations. Nations raided our, our land in Samaria, what they call Samaria, which is our northern kingdom. And then you have Jerusalem, which fell in 70 AD, okay, by the Romans. And through that, we were given over to other nations as captives, as slaves, okay? O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confusions of face, okay? But unto us confusion of faces, as at this day to the men of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and unto all Israel that are near and that are far off through all the countries, whether thou hast driven them because of their trespass that they have trespassed against thee. So a confusion of face. Now, if you sit back and you think um, logically what that would mean, it would mean that your face is not as it should be. Your appearance is not what it should be or what it's suspected to be. Uh, you can use the reference of, of judging a book by its cover. And if you do that, you have to understand that you're a very simple individual. Okay? Because there's a lot more to things in life than just the flesh. And you have to dig a little bit deeper in order to achieve that understanding. And that's only if the Most High is dealing with you. Okay? So confusions of face. Okay? Like me, I have leprosy, okay? That's a form of lack of pigmentation because my father's laid with Edomites, okay? Edomite women, okay? Because you are who you are through your father. You are who you are through the seed, the patriarch, not the mom. Your mom helps with the appearance, as you can see. 
but not with the spirit. Okay? Um, going on. O Lord, to us belongeth confusion of face. Okay, Israel. This is the book for the Israelites. Okay? Confusions of faces belong to us, to our kings, to our princes, and to our fathers. Because we have sinned against thee. So there you go. You, they have the scriptures telling you right now. This is my first point. Okay? That there's going to be uh, Israelites that don't appear to be Israelites. But through the spirit, okay, they are. And there's no doubt about that. Okay? And, and that's also why what went down for a reason. Because we did not obey the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Which, coming back right now, Israel is, is starting to come back together. Which leads me into my next precept. Because that's what's going down right now. We're in the end times. We're in the end times, excuse me. And uh, this was prophesied to happen. Israelites would wake up from their slumber and come back to the, their true nationality. All the nations are doing it. In fact, um, this is Amos chapter 9, verse 8. Behold, the eyes of the Lord God, okay, God in English, but Yahweh, uh, are upon the sinful kingdom. Okay, and I will destroy them, uh, uh, destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving, uh, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, saith the Lord. So the, the Most High is working with his chosen. Now I pray to be of that uh, number, okay? And first and foremost, it starts with the name. And it starts with the acceptance of being wicked. The acceptance of knowing what you've done, not only in this life, but in past lives as well. That were against and contrary to what we were uh, supposed to do. And it was a covenant. It was a, an agreement, per se. And I'll, I might get the word, uh, definition of covenant, too. But let's go ahead and continue. All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say the, uh, which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. Okay, So the Lord is weeding out um, his nation right now because judgment starts in Israel. Okay, so we're coming on these end days where there's going to be an exalted chosen people and there's going to be the rest of the world. And by rest of the world, I mean the two-thirds of Israel and the rest of the nations. And that's what's going down, okay? And I'm not the only brother in GMS that looks like uh, a Edomite. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I've dealt with that my whole life. And you scoffers don't bug me one bit. Because that's, that's been my whole life. People uh, fucking with me because they think I'm an Edomite. But go ahead, try. And then we'll find out who I really am. <laughs> uh, and here we go. The point really I really wanted to make. Um, in that day, okay, will I raise up the tabernacle of David. Tabernacle house, the house of David, his men, to people for its place. That is fallen, fallen for lack of obedience to the scriptures. And close, uh, close up the breaches thereof. And I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as in the day of old. So... We know that the Most High uh, separated Israel and spread them amongst the nations. And what's going down right now is the, uh, the remembrance of uh, who we are. And in my, my case, I grew up all my whole life. You know, I, just, you know, I knew my dad was an African-American, so-called. Um, and the same with my grandfather. Now, both of my, uh, my fathers were in prison for the most of their life. So I didn't get to experience an upbringing, uh, upbringing with them. But that's the curses, okay? That's the curses in Deuteronomy chapter 28. And what's going down right now, and not only in my case personally, I was told the Lord's name. And then I found GMS through uh, one of my uh, close friends that is also in this camp, the brother Yadazak, that we went to school, you know, as kids growing up. And it's, it's um, I won't say funny, but it's irony because it makes you fear the Most High. Because you see the subtility of his works, and he'll sit right in between your nose. And before you know it, he's going to land a sucker punch on your chin if you don't do what you're supposed to do. That's how powerful he is. Just because you can't see him, can't hear him, that's that sixth sense that comes into play. And when I got, I got the Lord's name, I looked in the GMS, it clicked with me. And I've been running with it ever since. And I've never had the integrity to stick with something like I have with this. And I know and I believe and I pray that I can continue to do this. But this is the truth. And with that, I want to go ahead and bring out a, a picture of my father here because... You know, not necessarily necessary, but just for any brothers out there that are, are new to this and maybe stumbled across, the, across this video, um, it doesn't matter how you look, man. If your spirit is uh, an Israelite spirit, then you can uh, return, man. Sh uh, Sharab, you can return. 
And, you know, you'll know that by your actions, man. There's brothers out there in the world that don't look like me. I, I, I To some degree, I have my father's features, you know, um, and, and so on. But there's people out there that have mixed so far into other nations that they do not at all by any means appear to look like uh, Israelites. So if you're a simple individual and you believe that uh, just based upon your superficial uh, perception of somebody's appearance that there's something or you know them, you're a very simple individual and I feel bad for you. But this is my father and this is my mother. Okay. Um, so this is when they were in high school. They were real young. So as you can see, my mom is an Edomite. My dad is a so-called African American. Okay. That's one case of leprosy. My dad wasn't as dark as my grandfather, and this seals the deal right here. This is my grandfather, my father's father, and his wife, my grandmother, per se. Now, you are who you are through your father, but you're going to tell me that I'm not an Israelite just because I don't necessarily look like one to a certain degree? That's very, uh, very childish, first and foremost, and it's very... Uh, it, it proves the point of how unintellectual um, not only Israel but other people are. And I feel bad for you. Um, but let's go ahead and continue with this lesson here so I can uh, hopefully pray to edify some brothers here instead of you, you uh, scoffers and shit. <clears throat> All the sinners of my people shall die by the sword. Well, let me, let me see, I'll go down one more time. Right, so that, that they, uh, so that's not even really the point that I was trying to make after that. But we're gonna rebuild. We're gonna rebuild. Uh, the Most High is gonna rebuild uh, the nation of Israel. Okay, and his men are waking up from their slumber. So going on, um, and I, I was watching uh, one of the mailbags from Elder Apostle Gabar. Uh, I always love watching Elder Apostle Gabar. All the elders, of course, but Elder Apostle Gabar. Uh, I always like catching his mailbags. They help me get through the day. And, um, well, this one, he brought up this scripture, and it's one that I, 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 you know, I don't know if I had come across yet. Um, but it says, Isaiah 8 and 14, and he shall be for a sanctuary, okay, the most high, but for a stone of stumbling and the rock, uh, and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel, for a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, okay? And Israel, you know, talking about uh, Judah and Jerusalem, is talking about the nation, man. And... That's just how it goes. It's a lot, brothers. One second. That's how it goes. You got people out there that are blinded. Okay, we were. I was blinded. I had never pursued anything with the Bible before. I was uh, told the name and, and brought into GMS. Okay, totally new to me. Never even been so-called religious. Any of that. Okay, so the Most High is dealing with a certain individual. He'll give you a chance. If it's his will, it's going to happen. There's nothing you can do about it. Okay, doesn't matter how you look. But here's my second point to this. A stone of uh, uh, stumbling, man. There's stumbling blocks everywhere, even for myself. Who knows? I may follow the truth. It's not up to us. It's not us to uh, uh, us in the flesh to make that decision because it's already been written. But you, you scoffers, man, that's what you're stumbling on. Because superficially you've been blinded by a higher power that you cannot perceive nor understand. And it's scary for people that can see. And it incites fear for the Most High and the Creator because of that. But you scoffers, man, that are caught up on people like me that look up, that, that you believe I'm an Edomite because I, I have leprosy, I have a lack of pigmentation. You don't think that I can be an Israelite? Because of how I look, or and not even for me, because I'll do justice for the rest of the brothers in GMS. You'll find brothers in GMS that don't even look I have features that I do of my parents, because I'm only two generations removed. So you can't tell me I'm not an Israelite. And it doesn't even bother me. But I'm just saying this is an edifying point because I think it's funny. I think it's I, I really find it humorous that there's scoffers that you know will come up and try and and and. and Use me or other brothers in camps as an example as why GMS is, is wrong or um, providing incorrect information. <laughs> and many among them shall stumble. And boy, are you doing that. You scoffers are stumbling all over the place. You can't get up. You're slipping. You can't get up and fall and be broken and be snared and be taken. So that should make you afraid of the Most High. Okay? Because... 
at any time he can he can do you like that. He can he can snare you. He can put something in front of you, a, a temptation of sorts, and and lead you to it. Okay, and that's what you scoffers are doing, man. You don't have no type of integrity because you're very simple and you use you use super, superficial judgments to read uh, something by the cover. And that's how you that's how you two thirds are, man. And you heathens, man. You 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 superficial. You read a book by its cover. You don't even bother to open the Bible. And you 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 come to brothers in GMS. And you act like you know what you're doing or what you're talking about. And you look like a fucking fool. Excuse my language, but you look stupid. Okay, you look real bad. Look real real uh, unclassy there. <laughs> so you you gonna get you gonna get taken away, man. You get taken away in Esau's society. This this white man, this so-called white man society. And you can go ahead and stay here. And be American Israelites, and we'll see how that works out for you. Don't don't come to brothers and GMS sound like nobody didn't tell y'all some shit when it happens and it goes down, and then you don't be looking like some dude that don't know jujitsu and on the on the ground for the first time, his eyes as wide as a doe, eyes as wide as a deer, scared as fuck. So next script I'm gonna grab is uh Ezra nine and seven. Since the days of our fathers have we been in great trespass unto this day. And for our iniqu iniquities have we, our kings and our priests, been delivered into the hand of the kings of the lands, to the sword, to captivity, and to a spoil, and to confusions of face, as it is this day. And boy, if that doesn't say it, say it all in one verse... I don't know what will, but like I said, the Most High is a man of war, and he's got a lot of you uh, scoffers out there looking real bad, spinning around in circles with your hand, you know, picking it, scratching your head until you get to your brain because you, you're so bugged out. Um, what else do I need to say? Being delivered into the hand of kings of the lands, because we didn't follow the scriptures, didn't follow the commandments, to the sword, to death, to captivity, okay, slavery. Today in America, that's what we're doing. Wage slavery. We've been disenfranchised, like the elder Malcolm says. We've been disenfranchised. We've been um, robbed of our heritage. We've been robbed of our customs by all the nations. And matter of fact, if you ask me, we've been robbed by our own damn people too. Because two-thirds of Israel have always held Israel back. And I'm no perfect man. Be the first one to admit that. Publicly. But you two-thirds, man, through your coonery, through your incredulity, look that word up. The elder apostle uh, Gabar has got me on a uh, tip to look words up and constantly try and enhance my vocabulary. And incredulity, your disbelief, your inability to believe. Because the Most High's got his hand over your eyes and you coming up on a cliff, bud. Coming up on a cliff and you're going to jump right in. Honestly, I feel bad for you two-thirds, man. Not really, but the way y'all be acting sometimes had me <laughs> shaking my damn head. Uh, and, and then I'll hit this because it's even more relevant. And now for a little space, grace hath been showed from the Lord, Yahweh, our God, to leave us a remnant to escape. Israel, a remnant, a piece, a portion. Let me go ahead and grab this definition real quick of a remnant. So that way I don't uh, um, try and roughly paraphrase it. Remnant, a small remaining quantity of something. Okay, let's go ahead and go back to the scripture here. And for now, for a little, uh, for a little space, grace hath been showed from the Lord, Yahweh, our God, to leave us a remnant to escape. So a small quantity of, of Israel, okay, <laughs> and to give us a nail in his holy place that our God may lighten our eyes and give us a little reviving in our bondage. And that's what's happening right now, man. This is our little reviving right now. We're reviving. We're coming back to life. Israel as a whole, whether you look like an Asian, you look like a, a European, like a Caucasian like me. Or you look like an African Hamite, or you look like a Japanese Ammonite, or you look like a uh, uh, Indian um, Elamite.
okay, or a, a, a Middle Eastern Arabic, Ishmael. If you have a spirit of the Most High and you hear this word and it clicks with you like it did with me, the Most High will take care of the rest. Okay, these scoffers ain't going to change that. Nobody's going to change that. Nobody can. If you ask me, they're flailing their arms, wasting their breath. But this is the reviving, man. This is our reviving. And it's happening right now. These breaches in the house of David is being raised back up. And it's being built back up. And when these days come, these latter days, there ain't going to be no more cameras. There ain't going to be no more uh, arguing with you uh, reprobates. It's going to be a, a wrap on this whole thing. And we're going to see how much Esau loves you, you two-thirds, man. We're going to see how much y'all want to be in the world and be American Israelites then. When you're getting ushered into a truck and they're trying to uh, poke you with a chip. We're going to see how it is then. Your eyes going to be big as a dough, like you saw some headlights. Like, oh, man. Damn. Damn is right. Next scripture, Psalms 146 and 9. The Lord preserveth the strangers. Okay, the strangers. Now, in the scriptures, you have, you know, I'm not going to give us a different subject, but you have Gentiles and you have Gentiles. You may ask me, what does that mean? What does that mean, Yahweh Don? Gentile is a form of context. It's like you use a word sometimes. These scriptures are written in parables. So you have to go into the words. Yes, you do have to read, you two-thirds and you scoffers, and you do have to study. Maybe a little bit too much. It might blow a brain, brain cell or something at some point. But the context that this is written in, because you'll go in the scriptures, you'll find Gentile, and, you, and if you look the word up in the Greek and the Latin with etymology, you'll find that it's a different context when it's used. Now what this, uh, this culture has done is they've transitioned the scriptures into three different languages, so that you, you do have to put in work to find out what the words mean. Because this word is used all the time in the scriptures. And in the context being used right now, the strangers of who? Whom? Israel. But later in the book, you'll see the strangers referring to the heathens. Referring to the other nations. Okay? Very simple. Very easy. But in this context, it's referring to the uh, strangers of Israel. Okay? Because we're strangers. I've been denied my heritage my whole life. I've been called white boy. I've been called Wigger. <laughs> I've been called uh, Wannabe, Wangster, you know, all that shit. It don't make me, it don't make me feel no way. I really wanted to do this for the brothers out there or the people in the world that maybe run across this video and, and think just because this Hebrew Israelite movement, um, and it's not a movement, it's, it's, it's a prophecy, but for the simple, I'm going to say movement because a lot of the two-thirds refer to this and see this as that, um, but if you believe, brother, and you sisters too, if you do run across this video, if you believe just because you look a certain type of way that you aren't who you know you are, and I'm going to put it like that, if you know who you are and you believe it, and the Most High is working with you, ain't nobody going to be able to stop you. None of these reprobates, none of these scoffers, the little bullshit keyboard comments, none of it, okay? The Lord preserves the strangers. He relieveth the fatherless and the widow. I had no dad. I had a dad, but he was in prison. His dad was an alcoholic. I didn't know either one of them for a long time in, in my life. And I remember that day when, when I got picked up from daycare and I was a little kid. And my granddad was in the car. One of the first times I met him. After my dad got out of prison. And he looked back. And I was young at the time. And now that I've developed, I've developed more of my father's features and my family's features. And my granddad looked back, and to this day, I, I believe it, but he looked back, and his eyes got big. He's like, my dad's like, this is your grandson. He got big. Like, he couldn't believe it. Like, after two generations of this skin pigment, look like me now. How about that? And for a while, I thought he almost looked at me like he didn't believe that I was my dad's son. But now, after he died... I thought about it, and I think he looked at me because he saw a lot of himself in me. He relieveth the fatherless and the widow, but the way of the wicked he turneth upside down. The society, man, stay with Esau. If you don't return to these scriptures, you're going to get left behind, and it's going to be painful. And it's going to be hell. It's going to be crazy when this martial law kicks off. 
Let me read the next scripture up. I forgot to get this one real quick. Salakim. Uh, the Lord opened the eyes of the blind. I was blinded. As I mentioned, I didn't even have any background in any type of religious quote, because this is not a religion, this is a heritage, but in the eyes of other people, religious views. I did not have an upbringing of uh, going to church or anything along those lines. My family, I was raised by my Edomite family. Like I mentioned, my dad was in prison, so of course he couldn't take care of me. And I was brought up under heathen customs. Shit, I know Edomites better than they know they damn selves. And that led me to make the decision I did to come to GMS because I saw the devil in their ways. And I'll probably put a part two up on this topic next time I get a chance. And it's going to be uh, talking about Esau Edom because I have a great perspective on them devils, man. These so-called Caucasians, man. They're very, very slippery like a serpent, man. But I know them. I studied them my whole life and I know them damn well. I know them way better than they know their damn selves. So I was blind, okay? But the Lord opened my eyes. You two-thirds can't stop me. The only person that can stop me is the Most High. And I'm scared to death of the Most High. Okay? So if, you are, if you're watching this video, you know, and, and you, you hear the word, Yah Bashim, Yah Bashai, okay? Who the world calls God and Jesus Christ, ignorantly. And it sups with you, something inside of you. More than just your five senses, because you can't be carnal in this thing. You can't be superficial. Otherwise, you're going to look like these reprobates getting cut up all the time by our elders, man. You're going to look real bad. And you're going to be laughed at. We're going to mock you. Okay? The Lord openeth the eyes of the blind. The Lord raiseth them that are bowed down. And the Lord loveth the righteous. So if you're an Israelite and you hear this word and you and you put your all into this, doing the best you can in this righteous rehearsal before Yahweh Shai returns with his army, to, to flip the, the, the scale upside down. Then ain't nobody going to be able to change that man. All they can do is get on these comment boards. And if you're on the line they're going to pick and poke at you. Okay. They want to try and tell you, 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 you you're not. Or what about him. Or, or he doesn't look like a, a, ne a so called Negro, Latino or Native American. But if the Lord. If this, if this spirit hits you with that sixth sense. That's what I'm talking right now brothers. I'm talking about a sixth sense, okay? More than the five fleshly uh, senses, the sixth sense, okay? Develop that sixth sense because spirituality is what will get you saved if you're of the elect. <clears throat> and the last scripture I'll go ahead and get, I'll wrap this up. I don't want to make it too long. Um, For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. Plain, cut and dry. Don't even need to say anything. It says, it says it for itself. And set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them. Okay, this is that context I'm talking about again. The stranger and the strangers shall be joined with them. Okay? So, if the Lord's only going to have mercy on Israel and Jacob, what context do you think he's referring to the strangers as? Because it's not the same context as you see in the other parts in the scriptures being translated in these three um, Yiddish languages of, of the same meaning. The, different, in a different context, they'd be talking about the, the, uh, the other nations. And... The heathens. Okay. In this context, it's very it's very plain. It's very easy to see. And set them in their own land, and the strangers shall be joined with them, um, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Okay? That's what I'm doing. Esau can kick a bag of rocks. Matter of fact, I'm going to tie bags of rocks to Edomite's legs in the kingdom. I got so much uh, malignity, so much... Hatred for Esau. I have I thought I sat back and thought about what I'm gonna do to Edomites. And check it out, I was raised by Edomites. That means I got Edomite family members, believe it or not. And they ain't gonna be excused from judgment. And some of you might be hearing they that's cold blooded, but what they did to our people is cold blooded on a whole nother level. Okay? And the same thing with the nations, too. The nations ain't getting out of this either because they had a hand and, and, and a, a part in this whole thing, too. They're going to get it, too. But the Lord's going to let them out of captivity. Edomites, Esau, it's a wrap for you. There ain't no coming back from, from what you're about to go through. You're going to be uh, put as a slave, and then you're going to go ahead and uh, be annihilated entirely. Okay? So the strangers are going to cleave to Jacob, man. The strangers are going to... Um, Denounce their previous life, just like the apostles did with Yahweh Shai. 
They're going to drop everything, and they're going to go. That's what I did. Shit, I trekked it out here on a, uh, out a year ago when I first got in this thing on a Greyhound bus. I was getting ready to go to college. I was getting ready to, you know, try and piece my life back together after dealing with the curses, which I still am. You know, not having my kid in my life, not having the ability uh, to be a part of my child's life because of the curses and, and getting knocked down by all different types of forces that I can't perceive with the five normal senses that people believe they're all that's all there is. Okay? But when I heard this word, I was gone. I dropped everything. My future. I started. T I said, I I, hold on, I don't want to worry about my future. I want to look at my past. What's up with my past? And then it hit me, man, like a Mack truck. As soon as I got the Lord's name, it hit me with a Mack truck. My life was changed. My eyes were open. The most I had mercy on me to understand that I'm an Israelite. And I, I, I'm blessed for that. I, I am very thankful for that. Yahweh does. Because... If you're of uh, another another nation in appearance and you hear this word and if this video reaches you, I want to convey to you, it does not matter how you, how you look superficially. These nations are only designated by uh, race now as a base point. That's the starting factor. You say all white people are going to slavery. That's right. But if you're a, a Caucasian, you, or excuse me, if you look like a Caucasian and you're not, it's called faith, brothers. Knowing the Most High is going to make it right. If you're a part of that number, he's going to pull you out of that shit. Okay? I think the point's been made. Um, I'm going to continue down one more step and I'll end it. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. So the other nations are going into slavery. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. And they shall rule over them, uh, their oppressors. So it's very simple. This is about to happen. The tables are about to be, a turn, be turned. And that's for all of us confusion of faith brothers as well. That don't appear to be of a certain race because of our appearance. There's brothers in GMS that look like a certain tribe as well. And ultimately nobody knows what tribe you are from until you would tell the other side. There's brothers that trace their line back far enough to know that they're a Native American, so-called. But they look like a Negro. So how are you going to tell me that I'm not an Israelite because I look like a Caucasian? <laughs> doesn't matter just about me either. It's the people all around the world that we're spread amongst the sands of the seas, man. We're the most uh, populent nation ever. Most populated. Have the most populous ever. And that means there's Israelites walking around all around. Shit, there might be Israelite that thinks he's a hillbilly. And, and is in some kind of Confederate KKK movement. Isn't that ironic? But that's how the most side works, man. It's a movie, man. All we're doing is riding now. And um, with that, I didn't want to make it too long. Um, I truly, truly hope that this video was edifying uh, to some degree to the to folks that decided to watch this. And then um, I want to say uh, keep your head up, brothers out there. Uh, maybe if you're dabbling in the truth and you don't know if it's right for you or if you don't think that just because you don't look like a so-called Negro, Latino, or Native American, that this isn't for you, uh, keep your head up, man. And the most high going to work it out. And none of these scoffers and none of these uh, reprobates can change that. So with that, uh, I want to say, Abanawa Shabashamiyam Kadash, Hayah Shamka, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Ratazaka Shah. Okay, Sharab if you're an Israelite, okay? Uh, all praise to the most high. Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai. Shalom.